Here's how to produce a cumulative frequency curve. Notice I'm using the upper bounds of the bases of the histogram rectangles in L1. It's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I have the frequencies in L2, and I'd like to put the cumulative frequencies in the, into L3. Since this involves using a formula, I'm going to go to the title bar for L3 and select that. Otherwise, I'll get an error message. So now I want L3 to be the cumulative frequencies for the list L2. So to do that, I'm going to press second, start to access lists, and the cumulative sum formula is under ops. So I scroll across to ops and scroll down to number six, or press the number six. And I press enter, and I want the cumulative sum of L2. So now we see we have the cumulative sum values for L2. Okay, press enter and we can see the cumulative frequencies have been ent entered in L3. So we're going to go to the stop plot. Now since we've got a stop plot 1, since we've actually manually calculated using the calculator, the cumulative sums, we can plot this using the time series option, which is the second graph type, not the final one, but the second graph type. Notice that I have already chosen the appropriate lists, L1 um, and L3, where the cumulative frequencies are. So let's look at the window I've chosen. The window I've chosen goes from 0 to 50 on the x-axis. The x-scale is 10. I've chosen, one thing I want to do is choose a minimum y value that's negative and just make it a fraction of the positive y values. This just allows your graph to be more readable. If you start at zero, when you use trace on the graph, uh, the writing will appear above the graph. I know the maximum of the cumulative frequency was 200, so I decided to go to 220. And if I graph now, I'll see the cumulative frequency table. And that's it. Sometimes people would say that you should join the segment from zero, 0 to the first point. You can do that if you want. That's it.